order. Testing one, two, three. What's going on? Norbcam coming at you. It's been a while since I've done a live stream, but I'm glad to be doing it on this exciting opening day of this event. This is the Northwest Pinball and Arcade Show 2023. I've got the president of the show. He happens to be my business partner and uh, 80s Broncos fan on the show. But Mike, you've been working hard for this day, I know. Yeah. So tell everybody a little bit about what is the Northwest Pinball and Arcade Show. Well, you know what I was thinking, Norb, is we've done this, what, about five, six times where we yeah, talk. Except I have a microphone. That's how it's different this time. But you know what? I say the same crap every time. I say, well, we have over 400 arcade and pinball machines, and, and I say the same stuff. And I thought, I think it's probably boring to most of you. You've probably heard me say this before. So what can we do that's different? There's one thing we can do. Oh, so, what's that? This is me from the 80s. Oh, Mike that's Lorraine, 1987 Mike Lorraine. There that, we go. that guy right there <laughs> would spend most of his money on video games at the local arcade. That guy right there. Let's see. Let's see how, di how li different. This is about 30 something years ago. Before, after. Before, after. We had to hold it closer. Let's see. Of, uh, there you go. So that's. Ha more hair. I, I think. Uh, my face is maybe a little tighter. <laughs> yeah, the hair, the hair is definitely thicker. The, yeah. the chin's a little more chiseled and defined, but a nice Letterman's jacket, though. Yeah. yeah. We're talking what? See what it, my jacket? 87 right there. 87, class of 87. Yeah, yeah, 87, baby. 87. Long yeah, yo. Long time ago. Well, let's get to the good stuff, because they don't want to just see us talking out here. They want to see what the games are about. I'm going to yeah. play those games. So, but in a nutshell, though, they the way it works is you pay... You pay one, you get a ticket, admission ticket, and then you can play anything you want for as long as you want. All the games are on free play with paid admission, and all the proceeds go to pay for the show, and we also donate a certain portion of them to charitable organizations. So, and all of us are volunteers. No one is paid. To nonprofit. So, 100% nonprofit. We're a 501c4, and uh, this is our 14th year. So. 14th year. Man, it goes by fast. Used to be up at the Seattle Center before they, you guys came down to Tacoma Dome. Yeah, uh, Tacoma Dome, Tacoma Convention Center. When we started, I looked more like that guy in the photo. Now I look like. <laughs> <laughs> Is it like uh, President Obama before he served his eight years, and then afterwards he comes out, he's all fresh, and then he comes out, he's like aged like 20 years, eight years later. Well, let's go see some games. Let's walk through. Oh, you should probably tell people, well, how much does it cost? How much does a ticket cost? It varies. Uh, to Friday, today is $50. Saturday is $60. Sunday is $40. Children 12 and under get in for free. Free! We like free. All right, so when you come in, first thing you'll see is they got several games that are here that you can win, actually. You can buy raffle tickets, and they're giving away a Godzilla pinball right there. They're giving away a Neo Geo system. What's it? Is that one of those multi-playing? It's got several games on it. Firepower 2 pinball machine and a Miss Pac-Man. But you got to be present to win, right? When they do the drawing. Except for that, you don't. The Godzilla, you do not need to be present to win. You'll put your name and address down. That's a, that's a different cost for a, a drawing ticket than these three. Oh, I see. Yeah, 20 bucks for that one instead of one. All right. Well, let's uh, let's work. Let's work this way over and see what they got. Now we have various posters from shows in the past, different odds and ends, different memorabilia. There's Byron. You should ask him. Ask him if you have a question on all this. We've got Byron, who you've seen. If you've watched any of my Rivals videos, you'll recognize this man. It's been a while. Byron, how you doing? It's Cam. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? 12 Camp Fan. 12 Camp Fan in the house. 13 years of doing this, right? 13 years? Uh, I think this is 14, actually. 14 years. 14 years yeah. All right. So, so for those who don't know anything about it, what's what's something special this year that you that people should see if they uh, were to come out here? Yeah. So we got a lot of prizes this year. We've got a Miss Pac-Man that we're raffling off tonight. We've got a Firepower 2 pinball machine tomorrow. We've got a Neo Geo arcade on Sunday, and then our grand prize we got a $20 prize that we're doing a Godzilla brand spanking new. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, we saw that. That's pretty cool. So yeah, you can walk home, take home some prizes from here, which is pretty cool. Any, all that stuff as well. We gotta get rid of it. Someone's gotta take it home. Come get it. All right. Well, we're gonna take a tour. Byron, it's good to see you, man. 
We'll catch you later. All right, so we're going to show you the um, just the layout of things. These are the new pinball machines. They all have LED screens on them now with video stuff as well as the pin actions. So even though this is James Bond Dr. No, it's an old film, but it's a new machine, right? Uh, I have a question for you. Um, one of Stern's newest games over there is Foo Fighters. I've never heard of the Foo Fighters. Have you? Oh, I've heard of them. I'm, I'm not real super familiar with them. I was a big fan, but but yeah, no, I, I uh, yes, I was aware of their existence. So there, you got a machine dedicated to them. Every time their name comes up, I think of that Kung Fu Fighting. And so I was like, oh, the Fu Fight Fightingers. But no, they're oh, that's different. It's different. Yeah. So, all right. The layout feels a little bit different from before. Did you guys change it a little bit? I don't remember this Area 51. Maybe it was here last year. It changes every year. Yeah, that's kind of cool. I didn't, re I didn't see that last time. So that, so pinball action. I'm, I'm, a, I'm more of a arcade guy. So the arcade games are, well, they're mostly in that section here. And then the pinball machines are kind of centrally located right over here. And you said there's about over 400. Uh, okay. both, 400 both pinball machines and arcade games. No, it, it's like roughly half and half. It just, it's close. We have, we always just, our goal is to get over 400 games. Yeah. Over here, these are called uh, Japanese candy cabs. That's the term, but they're, they're special kind of, a lot of rhythm games and really interesting stuff from Japan. This is why a show is great, because we get stuff like this. You'll never find these in arcades around here. Right. What do you call it? Candy what? Candy cabs. Like it's Candy cabs. So these would only be found in Japan. That's what I'm told. I remember, I guess it was two years ago when I came. I didn't come last year because I had COVID. <laughs> That's why I missed the show last year. But the year before, they had that colonoscopy game. I Did have it this year? I haven't seen it, but I remember it well. That was funny. That was weird. Uh, oh, let's see. We've got somebody playing a game over here. Oh, they've got Sinistar. Sinistar. Oh, I got, I've got a bunch of... These guys must be from Kent. These guys are from Kent. They smell like Kent. Just kidding. This is Dan. This is, hey, I'm the hero here. Uh, Dan, Dan and his brother Rob lived up the street from me, and they actually, their house, they still have up that street from my parents where they still live in that house but Dan was also the stunt driver in our uh, movie Frayed but we all went to school together elementary junior high high school but here we are we got Dan and we got Kurt also part of the Frayed crew executive producer right here so what what games you know what games are you uh, looking forward to trying to find out here we just finished Karate, Karate Champion Chills. yes and uh I won. I swept the leg, and no strike for no mercy. No mercy. Got him with a lunch punch, but then he swept the leg, and yeah, so it was, a, it was an epic comeback by yours truly. Were, were you a karate champ master back in the day? Ah, uh, no. No. <laughs> you just picked it up and just said, "Let's just try this one." The best is the, the the really awesome graphics of the '80s. Look at that. It's like Daniel Sun. Oh, Sinistar. They actually have it. It's one of those multi whims games. Oh, so it's got Sinistar, Defender, Stargate, Robotron, Joust, Bubbles. Sinistar. There you go. Yeah, I used to play this. Me and Rob used to play this down at SeaTac after we return our tuxedos after wearing them at school back when they used to do that. Then you get our mandatory ice cream bar dipped in chocolate with nuts and then play some of this. They need to turn the volume up. I know, you can't hear his voice. Doing... I hunger. Wim, you haven't had a chance to tour things around yet. I call him Wim. His name's Jim, but I call him Wim. Always have, always will. Wim, what's your game of choice here? If they had the game that you'd be most happy to see, what game would that be? You know, we went Super Cobra. What? The Super Cobra. Super Cobra. It's got to be in here. 
There's another name for it. It's Super Cobra, and he's got another name. No, it's Super Cobra and like, I don't know, it's helicopter, chop, I don't know. It's not Choplifter, it's something else. Anyway, yeah, it's cool. All the games are, are free play. My game, my favorite game, but I don't think they have it, according to Mike. He doesn't think he saw it here, is Gorf. For those of you guys who don't know, don't know Gorf, Gorf is a game. It's, it's kind of like the Space Invader style where you have a ship down the bottom and you shoot things from the t on top. But you have several levels, like five levels. It starts out with Space Invaders, then it's the thing called Space Warp, and then it's Galaxians. Oh, no, Laser Attack, then Galaxians, Space Warp, and finally the flagship where you have to shoot down the, the Gorfian flagship. You have to shoot in the vulnerable spot like the Death Star, and then the whole thing yeah, explodes. I need water. Insert coin. Ah, 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 ah. Bad moves, base cadet. That was calls to me when I hear it, but I don't know if it's, uh, if it's here. What is your favorite arcade game of all time? That's a tough one. I, uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I love the Laserdisc games when they came out. Those are great. Probably I would say my favorite would be, though, Mario Brothers. Where you you know you knock oh, the with the pipes upside, yeah. yeah 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 yep. kick off all upside down I love that game love that game how about your favorite pin favorite pin uh, probably Indiana Jones they don't yeah I love I love the gun pinball launcher it's an actual gun and when you fire it it has the Indiana Jones gun it's pretty cool let's take a walk let's see what they got here now they've got all right they're doing good here with Tempest. Tempest is solid. I'll play that. Uh, oh, Space Duel. That's a classic vector game. Joust, we used to own this game. like that one. Don't know. Uh, these, are, these are like those cabinet games that have multiple things on it. Assault. That's a tank game. Area 51, House of the Dead. Puzzle Fighter, Caveman Ninja. I never heard of that game. Puy Puyo Pop, Puyo Pop Fever. Puyo Pop Fever. Continuing on, we got Rush Hour 2049. Rush 2049. Rush the Road, Alcatraz Edition, Super GT, all the racing games. There's more video games somewhere else, right? Crazy Taxi. Still no sign. Oh, there's Defender over there. There's Defender. Robotron. This is uh, F355 Challenge. That's a pretty cool sit-down game right there. Jambo, Saf Jambo Safari. Don't know. Pole Position. This is a game. I could never do well at this game. I sucked at Pole Position. You turn that corner, and you always you touch you touch a car, and you blow up like you're made of TNT. But you know what I'll, I'll add is uh, my my late God rest his soul friend Kyle Cup, and I used to play this in the in the Red Robin and Yakima. And Kyle would always say, you know, Mike, the trick to beating pole position is you got to use the grass. He'd say the grass is the pass. Oh, it's to yeah. slow you down, right? But you could get around the cars by getting out on the grass and then just getting right back in. So. Okay, so we you had a technique. So were you pretty good at it? Oh, we got it back. So souped up levels. Oh, okay, okay. But I don't see a honky hung. I don't, I don't see a honky hung hoonier in here. That's regular Donkey Kong. Oh, we got old school stuff. Old school alert over here. Oh, tank! I had this. Oh, this is this is the one I used to have. We had the home version yeah, of this game until the joystick stopped working. This was useless. Yeah, I remember that. Black and white with the mines in the middle. Yes, sir. Miss Pac-Man Tabletop Edition. Ar Arkanoid. I played that a few times. Yeah, okay, okay. I never played this one much. All right, you got DDR over here for you who want to burn some energy. What are these games that look like washer and dryers? Oh, the, that what uh, cab the cab yeah, they're, um, they're thing. Like it really looks like it's inside of a, a washer dryer. <laughs> it's a washer dryer set. Well, this is a very tactile game right here. Should not spy. 
All right, take me to the other section of video games. As the search... Oh, there's Sinistar's table model. Okay, I'll have to tell Rob. They got Sinistar on a stand-up version. Cyberball 2072, Time Pilot. There's a classic Donkey Kong. Metal Slug, Tron, we own that too. We own Tron. Omega Race, I, I really liked Omega Race. That's one of those um, ve ver vector, gra vector graphics, right? Yep. Yeah, Vector. What's your Victor, Vector? What's your Vector, Victor? Qbert? So I will add the creator of Qbert, Warren Davis, is coming to our show today and he'll be doing a seminar tomorrow. Oh, that's the other part you didn't talk about is you do have guest speakers who work in the business and they talk about everything from behind the scenes of the games, designing the games, and all kinds of stuff. That's cool, the Qbert guy. To talk about so over here is a pinball machine called Secret Service. This is from 1988. Oh, you talked about this in your Facebook. I did. So uh, David Thiel, who's a really famous pinball sound and music composer, is one of the bad guys on the car there, and they had to block off a city street, and they set up all that for a real photo, and then they added painted visual effects to look like they were in motion. So they had real smoke. I mean, that is all real except for the painted gun flashes and the to make it look like the car's moving. But he said it was a very expensive shoot, all for one photo. Wow, let me see if I can figure out which ones. I know David. I'm gonna see if I can identify which one he is in this background photo. Right, he's not, that's the, that's the Ferrari. So it's gotta be one of these three, four people. And that's a girl, so it's not him. That could be him. Could be him too, or it could be this guy in the behind the wheel. Is he the guy behind the wheel? No. Oh, I'm wrong. Then it must be the one. Okay, the, that guy. That's the one. That's David Thiel. That's pretty cool. Uh, at, the, at the end of the game, they licensed the song "Nobody Does It Better" from the James Bond. Uh, movie. Nobody does it better. It, so it plays at the very end, and then David's wife, Carol, says something like, baby, 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 as her voice in there is kind of an extra. So so David Thiel, he's a regular part of the, the show, and he does he's done sound effects, sound design for a lot of these pinball machines, right? Yeah, he's doing a talk tomorrow on, uh, they're coming out with a queen pinball machine, and then he did the sound design for Pulp Fiction, which is the big oh, machine over there. Also, he did... He didn't. He did the sound for Qbert too, right? He did. He made Qbert say swear words that sound like. So you have the designer of Qbert and the sound designer of Qbert both at this show. Yes. Wow. So if you're a Qbert fan, this is like you got. That's like seeing Spielberg and Lucas of Qbert here. You got to come for that. That's tomorrow. Yes. Tomorrow, that's tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yep. I always like this one because this is blatant Star Wars ripoff called Space Encounters. But tell me what what scene is this? Hmm, I wonder what that ship looks like. I wonder what that background's supposed to be. <laughs> There's no X-Wings, though. Pretty good effect, but really it's, it's just another Space Invaders game, but they just add the trench graphic to make it look like you're moving fast. Pretty pretty clever idea. Well, and you can see it was that, it's actually a black and white game, yeah, and they, they have a color, color overlays. Colored overlays. Yeah. Pretty good tricks. Oh, the classic. Space Invaders. I'll play that a few times. I'll tell you something about Sprint. We went to uh, me, Rob, and I think our friend Sam. We went skiing up at uh, um, uh, which was not the, not still Kwame. What's the other one? Stevens Pass. And we went to go inside to go play some video games, and this is one of them. And we put our our skis on the rack like everybody does. And while we were playing this game, somebody stole my skis from Japan. I had these rare Yamaha Japan skis. They were really cool, and someone stole them while we were playing games. Like, who steals skis from the public ski rack? They must have known it was a special ski because they stole my skis. Some things don't change. Like, who does that? Just like we got our stroller stolen at the Puyallup Fair. Who does that? Who steals a stroller? But it had, you know, my wife's purse in it, a bunch of photos that we took of the kids, and numerous other things. I was like, who steals strollers? Who's got the guts to steal a stroller? Anyway, oh, a few more games here. Basketball. Oh, basketball. Oh, yeah, that's the classic 
black and white game with really bad graphics. The ball control. Don't know it. Warlords, another game that's black and white with color overlays. Hustle. Circus. We're kind of in. We're kind of in the late seventies. Kind of a. When, it, when it, if he misses the platform and lands on his back. It's so simple, but there's something mesmerizing about it, and it does move relatively close to kind of reality. Too. Paddle control is hard to emulate on any kind of computer. Oh, yeah. You know, you can do true, it with the mouse a little bit. True, but there's no tw there's no twisty control on an actual computer. Oh, Wizard of... What is it? Wizard of Gore? Wizard of, Wizard of War. Wizard of War. I used to play this one. Oh, it's, oh this is a lot like... Um, it, it had a uh, gorf, gorf intruder sound. alert, intruder alert. Gotta hear the gorf sounds in there. Uh, what's the other? Berserk. Berserk is a lot like this. It's when they were back in the escape from the maze trend. To me, though, it's really the gorf look. It's got the gorf True. Kind and of sounds. art you know, style to it. 1980. Fifth, am I right? 40, 43 years ago? 43 years ago. Yeah, we're old. S Super Zaxxon. Oh, Burger Time. This is a weird asteroid. It's so small. What's up with that? It's, a, it's like a mini cabinet. Yeah, they they the some of these to just try to fit into small spaces. Yeah, it's and like, you know, 7 Elevens and like like half pint size. It's just tiny, very tiny. I don't like it. Looks like a mailbox. Uh, Marvel vs. Capcom, yeah, Gyrus, used to play that. That's the one where you kind of spin around the orb, the kind of, the creatures come from the middle and you spin your ship around, right? I like Gyrus. I, I played it too. It was fun. fun. It had, remember, it had really good music. Yeah. Oh, there's another Miss Pac-Man. You'll always find Miss Pac-Man. Granny and the Gators. Oh, this is like a, this is a, a pinball machine. Gators, there was a very short time where they tried to combine pinball and a video game to keep people interested. So Granny and the Gators is one of those rare... So you play the game below and the game above. Weird. But now now the new pinball machines all kind of have a little bit of the screen above with the pinball play field below. All right, let's see. Any other... I know there's like European section of, European section of games. Let's go check that out. So again, for those of you joining late, this is the 2023 Northwest Pinball and Arcade Show with president of the board, Mike Lorraine here, giving me the tour of the, uh, the games that they have today, or for the weekend, actually. You have till Sunday to enjoy it. So we got, these are international versions. Yeah, these games come from a really, really nice collector. His name is Paul, and he, he, uh, he's collected these for a lot. Oh, is he the one in Oregon? No, he's, he lives in the Seattle area. Oh, okay. But he uh, he cares for these. They involve a lot of maintenance, and he brings them to the show every year. Uh, we really appreciate him doing that because they're really unique. So they're European. So the games are more or less pretty much the same, but the cabinet tree and stuff is yeah. a little bit different. Actually, the big difference is these all run on 220 volts, so they're, uh, oh, they're like the, the same as your your dryer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So well, that's... That's like in the Philippines. The, the the voltage there is instead of 120 volts AC, it's 240. So if you try to plug in certain things like a dryer from the United States over there, you got to fry the sucker. Well, which means they're a little bit more dangerous to work on. You really need to know what you're doing because if you get shocked with 220 volts, that's a that's rough. So you got to get a special adapter to play to for these games to run on this voltage, then, huh? Well, no, they they have them getting that oh they're already yeah, they're adjusted oh okay all right so there's more cubert eyes feet oh there's a phoenix the one thing you know the story here of puck man i mean that's the japanese version of pac-man right and when it came to america it was really called puck man but they decided they should change the name because it sounded similar to a certain word, to a certain word. <laughs> so so that's right, the Nintendo, right? No, no, who made it? it, was, it was Midway. Mid Midway, but, it, but it was a Japanese. Namco. But it was a Japanese creation. The creator was Japanese. It originally came out was indeed Puck Man. And they changed it to Pac for the United States. Interesting. But the game itself is the same, right? Yep. Same, same game. 
the artwork looks different. Well, again, this is a European yeah. cabinet, so. Which is one of the differences, right? I like that little thing on top. Wait, that's, that's added. That's not part of the cabinet. Somebody just threw that on there. I was going to say, they didn't make those. They didn't make those things back in the day. What else we got here? Some chick. There's no name. I don't know the name of this game. But I mean, an observation you might be noticing if you're watching the video is that a lot of the arcades don't have people playing on them. But if you like look over here at all these pinball machines, they're pretty much all occupied. That's and true. It's because a lot of people really love to play pinball. And it's something you can't play at home. Like, you know, most arcade games you can play on the computer or on the Xbox. But true. pinball, you kind of got to... That's weird. true. The games, they do have simulators and emulators and all that. So you could play these games. And they have pinball emulators as well, but it's not the same. You can't feel you can't feel the plunger in your hand. You can't feel the flippers. You can't juggle the machine to nudge that ball left and right. All right, almost to the end of it here. Jackrabbit, Astro Wars, Hypersports. Oh, that's the track and field, I think. The Invaders, which is actually Space Invaders. Oh, under repair. Judge Dredd. All right, so is that pretty much all the video game sections? Everything else is pins? Show, let's, go to the, let's go to that uh, Pulp Fiction thing and check that out. Oh, look at this Terminator 2 pin. All right. Uh, Pulp Fiction, brand new. Tell me about this pin. How did this come to be? It's brand new. It's brand new. Uh, well, are you filming the game? You should film the game while we're talking. So, well, let me ask you a question, Norb. What looks different about Pulp Fiction versus most other modern pinball machines? Uh, there's no screen. Very good. There's no screen. So they designed a game that is modern, but with a more of a retro feel. So they got away with the screen and, and made it more like a game from the 80s. With the Interesting. Box, okay, with okay. With numeric display. I see that. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. People love it. People love it. Retro is kind of cool, right? Old is in. Tell me about the, the art back here. Uh, there was an artist, I don't know his name, but he basically did this work and they had Quentin Tarantino was involved in the whole process of making this game. So he's approved everything they've done. So they've got, of course, I forgot, I forgot their names, but Furious Anger. I'm doing great. What's your name? Butch Peel. Butch? Yes. Uh, my name is Norb. Norb Cam Wheelie. Nice to Norb Cam. Uh, you're live on my YouTube channel right now. I'm just giving everybody a taste of what they might see here if they come to the uh, Northwest Pinball and Arcade Show. Lots of Pulp Fictions right over here, that's for yeah. sure. Mike was just telling me about this machine. You have a, well, you get this t-shirt I see, yeah. so you must have a bad mother flipper. Oh, I like that. <laughs> yeah, the one that says bad mother flipper on it. So, do you have a special connection to this machine? Is that why you got the t-shirt? Yeah, I'm, that's the team t-shirt. I, I work on the manuals for the game and work during the design process on things like reliability and, and maintainability, serviceability, making sure the games are easy to take care of and that they'll hold up. Nice. Well, Mike was telling me how they kind of had a retro look. There's no 
LED screen on the top. It's more like an old school game, so yep. people seem to like that. Huh? Yep, and that's especially was uh, what T Quentin Tarantino wanted, so that's how that became. Well, his style, he's always throwing the old school songs and in, in, in the 70s or the 80s, yeah, yeah. somewhere in there, but yeah, that's what he wanted, so that's what they designed, and they knocked it out of the park. And you like the final result? Oh, he yeah. gave us blessing? He, he did. He's very surprised and that it came out so great, and he just loved it. Yeah, I remember seeing the the video. I think you showed me a video about it. And this is something like where they have the where they're doing the dance. I didn't. Where, where is that on here? The limited edition games have a topper on them. Oh, so we I, was I was like, where is the dancing thing? It's got a limited edition. Yeah, okay. So the topper has two spinning motors with uh, Mia and Vince up there dancing while the that yeah. mode goes on. It's very That's cool. Right. Mia and Vince, but they don't have that in here. Get, Only limited. You get them. You still get the call outs and everything. It's that's really pretty much the only difference between the LEs and the special editions. It's the primary difference. But what's your favorite game here? My favorite game here. Ooh. I was like asking, what's your favorite movie? What's your favorite food? But if you could only play one for the rest of your life, and 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 it would be in your house forever, which one would it be? I've I've always been partial to Medieval Madness personally. Medieval? Do they have that here? Uh, I, mean, I think they do have one over there. Really? Then Where, you take Monster a, Bash and Wizard of Oz and Pulp Fiction. They're so close to number one that it's not worth talking about. You okay. know what I mean? Well, show me, show me Medieval Madness. Okay, we gotta find one. All right, well, we'll we'll look around. While you're while you're looking, okay. While you're looking, do you play any of the video games? Uh, I have a just a pinball guy. I play video games, but I don't. I don't, I'm not very good at them. <laughs> I'm not good at that pattern and stuff. There's a the medieval madness, right? Oh, this is it right here. So let's take a look at it. This is if he had only one game left to play in his life, yeah. it would be this one. It's kind of relatively new. It's got the screen back there. Well, that's a, that's a medieval madness of the Williams remake from around 19 what 97, I think it is. Oh, it's a remake. Yes, it is. So is it a, an older pin that they relaunched? with yeah. more firepower. Same as the Cactus Canyons over there on either side of uh, Pulp Fiction, yeah. So what do you like so much about this? Why, why is this up there with you as your favorite? Well, my, my primary thing is uh, make me laugh, you know. Games make me laugh, I love that. So Pulp Fiction does that because I love the movie so much. Sure. Uh, this game has some of the craziest call outs in it. You've got the Duke of Bourbon, and drunk guy that's calling out and telling you, what to shoot and things uh it's got oh it's got uh sir sir psycho which is a crazy guy doing uh, yeah the voices are just amazing they use like uh new york girls to, to call out for the damsels to tell you to shoot up come up here meet my mother you know and it, it just cracks me up every three two time. one blast off yeah exactly uh, yeah, that's cool to see me or is that your sword in your pocket oh, yeah, you know, yeah. Kind of nice nice that's cool. Oh, she's got a multi-ball going on. Multi-ball. I don't know about you, but when a, when a multi-ball happens, I just start stressing out. <gasps> too much. Too much stuff. I'm going I'm to mess it up. Anxiety. That's what it's all about. Yeah. For people who have never played pinball, machines, uh, pinball machine before, what's the three tips you'd tell a beginner what to do or not do when you first walk up to a machine? Well, when you first start a game, don't start smacking on the flipper buttons over and over again. I tell people on that, if you're going to play baseball and you're waiting for the pitcher to throw the ball, you don't start swinging your bat as soon as he goes into his windup. That's a good point. for the ball to get to That's you. That's true. Right? The ball's got to come down to you first. So, so many people will miss the ball because when it comes to them, they're in the middle of a previous swing, basically, and you can't rewind and yeah, start it over doesn't, again. It doesn't work too well. The other thing that Mike told me early on is you never push both buttons at the same time. That's right. That Never hit them together because that creates a big old gap in the middle. You, you start doing that and people look at you funny like, oh, we got yep. a newbie in the house. Yep. And then, you know, just stay calm and... And look at where the lights are lit and shoot for the lights. Try to make the arrow shots and things that it, that are lit up. That's Going after the lights. Do. Yeah, it's very, very simple. And, uh, yeah, don't don't shake the machine too much because you'll tilt. tilt it. <laughs> That's not a good learn lesson to learn. It's not fun. Do you own any pinball machines? Uh, yeah, quite a few, actually. And is Medieval Madness one of them? 
Yeah, I have two of them actually. Oh, <laughs> Well, that's fitting. That way, if one breaks down, you have another one ready to go. I work for a Chicago gaming company, and part of my deal there is I get a new game of every game. So I got a remake, and I have the original oh, also. Oh, so it's not two of the same. It's the old one and the new. That's right. Wow, that's they're, pretty cool. Two of the same still, so yeah, they play the same. So It'd be like having the Battlestar Galactica from the 80s, and then you get the Galactica series that came out in, like, 1990-something. That's the way I can set one game up in my sister's and she can enjoy it and my wife can still have the one at my house to enjoy. I don't get in trouble, see? Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, because they do take up some real estate so you can't have them. You don't have unlimited space here, right? Yeah, it's not matchbox cars I'm collecting here. They <laughs> take a lot more space. Yeah. Very cool. It was nice talking to you, man. Thanks Thank for all the insight. Nice, nice Good to stuff. You. Nice to meet you. Have fun. All right, I plan to. Take care. Thanks. Good stuff. That's good stories there. He's a good guy. All right, anything else that we missed? Anything special that I remember they had like the Hercules pinball machine? The, the other brand new game that uh, has come from Jersey Jack Pinball is based on the movie The Godfather. Oh. So they have one of those right over here. Okay, is that what all the people are huddled around? Yeah, but you know it's going to be good if there's a big line for it. So this is brand new? Let's go to the other side. Let's go to the other right. side real quick. We'll, go, we'll cut through. Pardon us, excuse me. All right. So this is the, what is it, 50 years Godfather special edition pinball machine. All right, I'm going to shoot it while you tell me about it. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I can't tell you a lot. I don't know a lot about this one except it's brand new. Uh, it's the newest game from Jersey Jack Pinball, so a lot of people haven't been able to see it yet until our show because it's, they're, they're still making them. So... That's all I know. Okay. I don't even know what it sounds like. I haven't been able to hear it. I'm sure there's got to be some. Uh, what's a What's a famous What's a famous Godfather quote? Get an offer you can't refuse. I've only seen the movie one time, so I <laughs> I, I can't quote that one as good. Screenplay, screenplay by Mario Puzo. So. Watching a player like this guy, can you tell right away how good a pro player is by just the first minute of watching them play? He knows, he knows what he's doing. Yeah. He's got the proper stance, got the one, lay, one knee bent, the other one slightly more straight. Got, that's his posture. How does, how does his gaming posture? Well, everybody has their own gaming posture. I mean, you can watch videos on people that have all kinds of weird moves, the way they, the way they play pinball. That's kind of part of it, right? So... But watching the way he knows, you know, it's, he knows the angle of the ball. He knows the way it's going to bounce off the flippers. So he's trying to play it correctly based on physics. So yeah. He knows so you can ball control. That's the key, right? A that's good player can control that ball. That's what pinball's all about. Is controlling. What was that movie we watched? That was a really good movie. That pinball movie. What was that movie called again? Well, it's called The Man Who Saved the Game. Man who saved the game. Highly recommend it. You, you wouldn't normally, like, I never would have watched that movie by myself in a million years, but Mike actually brought up to our, our guys' weekend out, and we watched it, and it was really good. I never thought I'd be that into a movie that, that basically uh, was based, centered around a pinball machine, but it was really pretty interesting. The man, was it again? The man who saved the pin? The man who saved the game. The man who saved the game. Yeah. Very cool. This guy is clearly frustrated. The ball got stuck. The ball got stuck. Yeah. This is a bad moment for Jersey Jack to be caught on YouTube Live. <laughs> for I'm shooting the game for it's more, not even, not even That's two minutes, I, and you? the ball is stuck. It's funny. This guy looks kind of like Joe Coy. It's like if Joe Coy had an older, less famous brother. This is what he. This is who he looks like. Does he look like Joe Coy? Looks like Joe Coy. Pro just not as rich, famous, or funny, probably. So when that happens, we have a very sophisticated system where we get a key, and they'll come fix it. So you know what? Let's go over and... Oh. Medic! I got to start playing some games. I definitely got to play me some Donkey Kong and some... Uh, um... Cinestar. We used to call it Cinebud. Let's see the present in action. Let's listen in. Well, let's not listen in, but let's watch. 
Mike is saying something to the fact that the new Godfather machine is um, ball is stuck. Okay, we'll get right on that. Um, let's go issue a out of order ticket, and um, <laughs> hi. Nothing like shooting people without their permission. Get them real nervous. All right. Well, Mike's do that. Oh, there's a Mandalorian game. You guys have been fans of the Mandalorian? I like that show, even though people seem to give it a hard time, especially the later episodes. Got to love all the uh, artwork. The artwork is kind of what makes it. I'm just looking around. Pretty cool. Well, this might be a good time to wrap up this little live stream so I can go play some games myself. But again, we're here at the 2020 Northwest Pinball and Arcade Show here at the Tacoma Convention Center. Be here all weekend. Today's Friday. It'll be here Saturday and Sunday. You play. You pay one price. You play all the games all day long, as long as you want. Lots of stuff to see. It's pretty cool. Hundreds of games and pinball machines to be discovered. And today's not that busy, being that it's Friday and a school day. But come tomorrow and Sunday, it'll definitely be much more crowded. But something worth checking out if you're a gamer. Especially old school. All right. We'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for hanging out with me. Norbcam signing off. Oh, wait. Maybe I'm not signing. Maybe I'm not signing off. So, we're going to have bonus we're gonna, material. We're gonna have you. Norm's going to help us uh, unstuck a ball. Woo. Special. I hope I can do it one handed since I'm the cameraman as well. Let's see, let's see if they gave me the right key. Oh, it works. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to beat the lock bar off, and we'll run the glass down. So, Norb, why don't you reach in there, and can you reach in there and grab those balls and unstuck them? How many balls are we talking about? They, both these balls right here. they got to come out and go back down. All right. All right. got to hold this then. Okay. I'm going to walk right. you through the process here. Right. So I'm going to grab some balls. Unstick them. Here we go. Where are they? Where are the balls? Oh, right there. Yep, gotta, so they got to kind of get them that way? Get them out with your finger. No, that's not as easy as it looks. Watch this. going to get you. That's one. That's one. Let me get this guy's duck in here. Uh, 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 uh. It's really a two. It's really a two finger. Operation, but I'm gonna kick it. I'm gonna kick it. Come on, come on. There he goes. You did it. We did it. One pinky does the trick. That's it. So you put it back together. Slide to the left. Put back the cover. This is called the lock bar. Oh, it's just like training and pinball training 101. Turn it back on. And if you want, it's going to go through a boot up sequence because the new machines have computers in them. That's a very young Al Pacino right there. It's going through its boot up just like a computer. Yep, yep, it is a big computer. Give it an offer, it can't refuse. Pretty cool artwork, though, I must say. See, the, the old school games, you turn them on and you're playing within yeah, seconds. Sure. The new ones, there's a whole what is booth. This? What is this business? What is all this? Take it too long. Oh, let there be light. And back in business. <laughs> Do you, do you want to play a game before we let the folks behind us go? 
Would you like to play a game? Sure. All right. I'm going to try. Mike's going to film. Okay. He's going to play one game, and then you guys can go. Don't worry. It won't last long. Trust me. <laughs> yeah, he's not very good. All right. All right. So. Pinball master more. So what are the, what are the tricks? What have you learned? Don't don't flip the flippers constantly. You got to act like the ball's coming in like a like a batter waiting for the pitch to come. Don't hit both flippers at the same time. That's like dummy mode. And then hit the lights. Anything that's lit up, hit them. And if um, on this game, if you win, get the high score, it spits out 50 bucks. 50 bucks? Yeah, 50 bucks. Even if I had it said. That's not even true. If believe, even if I believed you, ain't going to happen. All right, I right, hit the start button. Let's go. Bam. Look. Oh, double flippers. Just kidding. Oh, there's a. Oh, they see it went down the hole already. I suck. Get over there. Oh, I threw the spinner back to the top. And it's gone. Hey, where'd my ball go? It went, it went, it went up here, and it went up here, and it disappeared. Don't tell me it got stuck again. Well, it'll go in a ball search mode. It'll go in a ball search mode in a second here. Really? Yeah. Once it senses nothing's happening. Oh. Oh, and it gives me a new ball. No, it's trying to. Fi oh, it's, it's trying, trying to find, find it. Ball. We're finding it. Well, I didn't know they do those things. That's cool. So really, they'll search. It's like hide and seek. Wow, we've we've made the machine crash twice in five minutes. Woo! Where did, where did it go? Well, it went up up here, disappeared behind the big guy, and never came down. I must be bad luck with the Godfather. As soon as I showed up, the machine gets lost balls twice. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. I'm gonna, it for, I'm, gonna go right. get, I'm gonna go get some extra help. All right. Wow. Sorry, the ball got stuck. Well, I'm just bad luck for this game. So I didn't even get to lose. I didn't even get to play out my balls. I lost the second ball. All right. Well, this is a good time to stop. So I need to play some games. Bye, everybody. Come down to the Northwest Pinball and Arcade Show, Tacoma Dome through the weekend. I mean, Tacoma Convention Center.